Hi, I'm Rick, and today we're going to talk about function blocks in 61131 logic in the SEL RTAC. And today I have the SEL 3555, our newest RTAC, here with us now. So a function block is, think of a, a piece of code, like a subprogram or a subroutine, that you call to perform iterative tasks, similar to a function. The difference between a function block and a function is that a function block can remember the variable values in between times it's called. So each time you call it, it's going to remember those variable values, and that's very valuable for doing timing or doing uh, counters or something like that. Another difference is, is that function block does not return a value. It can modify variables, but it, it does not return a value like a function does. So let's just jump into it here, and I'll show you how to put one into your program. So go to the Insert menu when, in an open project, click on 61131, and select Function Block. And here you can change the name of the function block, you can select the language, whether it's continuous function chart, structured text, or a ladder diagram. I'm going to use structured text in this example, and then click Insert. And you notice that there's not a place for the function block type like there is a function because a function block doesn't return a value. So I have created one here. Here's the name. It's a FIR filter. And a function block has the variable section up here. You'll notice that these are the local variables. Local variables are only seen by that instance of that function block, and I'll talk more about instances in a minute. There's also a var input section, and those are inputs into the function block from the program. And there's a var output, and those are variables that are outputs. And you can have any number of inputs or outputs or even local variables. Down in this section is the code section. I'm not going to go through the uh, details of this code, but I have some for loops and some if statements and things to do the code that I need to do. And then let's go to the program that I wrote. So the program just calls the function block and gets a value back. And the way you do that, uh, let's look at the var section. Here I have what we call instances of the function block. Because a function block can remember the information from the time it's called to the next time it's called, we need instances of it. And you think about just copies of that code. But instead of physically having to copy the code, you just make instances of it. I have instances of the function block. This one's called meter1 underscore fir and it's of type FIRFB. So the FIRFB is the name of my function block. And I can create any number of those. So you can see here I have several more created. Meter2 FIR, Meter3 FIR, and those are all of type FIRFB, which is this function block. To call the function block, I simply use the name of that instance, Meter1 underscore FIR, and then I assign any inputs. I only have one input in this example, but I could have multiple ones. This one's called volt in and I'm going to go back to my uh, function block, and you can see that my var input is volt in, and I assign it to a value. In this case, the value is a voltage that I'm getting from uh, 735 meter. To receive the output, I have a variable called meter1 underscore r value. It's a local variable that I created. I assign the value of meter1 underscore fir dot r value to meter1 underscore r value. And this dot r value, let me just show you real quick here. So I'm going to put a period, and you can see that the R value shows up. Those are all of the inputs and outputs that are available in that function block. I'm going to go back to the function block, and you can see that that is the output. Any number of outputs or inputs I have here, I can access by putting a period and then the function block variable name. OK, so we can see that we can do that multiple times with any of these other instances. There are also built-in function blocks into 61131 that we can use. Here I have a program that is a continuous function chart. As we discussed previously in another video, I can drag a box over there, and so I have a box here, and I can just start typing R trig, or whatever the function block that I want to use is, and it'll show up here in the input assistant. I select it, and to use that, I need to make a function block instance of it, which I did up here in the var section. So similar to the function block that I created, I make instances of that function block in the var section. If I'm using a function block that is a standard function block, like an R trig or a T on or one of those things, I also have to make instances of those, and I can name them whatever I want. And that's about it for function blocks in this video. If you have any other questions, feel free to call us here at SEL and watch our other videos. Thanks.